I think Woods um, is the best setup man I've ever had. Um, he touched upon topics that I'm going to go over today. Um, first of all, good morning. Um, what I plan on going through is I'm going to talk a lot about complex systems. Um, I might use the word system of systems. I might use the word distributed systems, right? Um, complex systems, many pieces all interacting together. My point of this talk is to kind of identify the features that come with it. Pros, cons, some of, them you might, some of you might see them as pros, some of, the, some of you might see them as cons. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about control, um, about these systems. So my original rant was hours long, and I'm trying to condense this into 13 minutes, so I'll do the best that I can. So again, thanks for the introduction. My name is Zoran Perkov, and for the last eight years, I've been working um, in an operation role in the stock markets. Uh, I think the best way to possibly describe this to all of you is that um, I have broken production many times. Um, I've learned how not to break production. And, and I realized that through that learning process, um, I haven't learned enough. And Velocity represents uh, one of those conferences where you get to interact, talk to people, and basically steal information about what you have gone through and, and when you break production. So the United States markets are the largest, fastest, and most technologically stable markets in the world. Today, we execute approximately 6 billion shares a day, valued at about $230 billion. A eh, little number. Um, historical peak trading days, you see that double. Um, and the cool thing about historical peak trading days is that they're unexpected. So you could prepare for the worst case scenario, but you don't know when it's going to get there. Um, oh, this is where it's a perfect statement for the web community. This all happens between 9.30 and 4 o'clock. Yes, I don't have 24-7, 365. I have weekends. Um, but the systems are still up, and I'll still get paged if you know, the network goes down. So. In a complex system, you can have a system break down without any part of that system failing. The interaction between parts can break down absent of any coding bug, human error, hardware failure, or any of the common root causes that you see in public postmortems. It would seem that we would have a more reliable market system if we just tested more, trained more humans, and bought better hardware. That's not the case. As interactions become increasingly more difficult to comprehend, our inability to make sense of failures can contribute to future failures that are far, far worse. Excuse me for constantly reading. I really want to make sure that I say these things very clearly, and reading it off the screen is much easier. So relationships, big deal. You can have relationships that degrade where your code does not have a problem. You did not have a hardware error. The network was not in the way. So if you think about scaling and where you start to get new traffic, everything can be working fine. But you're potentially exploiting things that you did not think about, and in turn, ends up causing a failure. So I have some examples. So I wanted to show some evidence of these failures, as I call them. One example would be an order entry gateway has intermittent issues and eventually completely goes down. So this is like, um, I want to buy something at 3 a.m., um, and I'm unable to, but all my friends actually can get in and buy it. And of course, they're great friends. They remind you that they have it, and you don't. So you get frustrated about it, right? This type of event I would call a low-impact style event. Another example. A publicly listed company that cannot be traded during a time frame as a result of a glitch. So this is like waking up at 3 a.m. Um, to buy a specific product, right? So you're demanding immediacy of that product, but you can't get there. Other people that opted to pick that up at 6 a.m. had no problems, right? Um, and other people that wanted to buy other things, they also had no problems. So this one I consider a medium impact. Last example. A stock market is down for 100 minutes because of a technical glitch. So 
I want to go on a little bit of a tangent here about glitch. Glitch is an interesting word. So I did some research, and I'll share that research with you. An internet search for technical glitch gives you about 700,000 results. The first few pages seem to have a lot about stock markets and subway systems, oddly enough. When you attempt to find the history of the word, the origins and etymology are unknown. It's more of a sound than a word. Given the severity of these outages, these impacts that I just described to you, how is it that glitch is an accepted word at all for these type of events? So these glitches, apparently, they bring down stock markets. They stop transit systems. Um, they cancel your restaurant reservations. They apply descriptions to images incorrectly and give out red light tickets at an alarming rate. <laughs> I imagine, I imagine if you use the word glitch in a post-mortem um, session at Etsy, Allspaw will probably just cry. Anyway, 100 minutes of outage. Um, the last example, a stock market is down for 100 minutes because of a technical glitch. I should actually say 10 billion microseconds, because microseconds is what market participants demand. So that's kind of the time frame that I'm dealing with. So 10 billion microseconds, um, oops, 10 billion microseconds, if you use some quick and bad math and just think of this from a maximum input, impact standpoint, that's approximately 1.3 billion transactions that did not happen. That could have happened, but didn't happen because stock market's down. So high impact, highest level of severity, this is your site being down hard. So. Given the impact levels of these events, time moves very quickly on this stage. Uh, given the impact levels of these events, they are oddly linear over time as each event is worse, was worse than the previous. More than likely, there were minor incidents between these examples that may or may not have been contributors to the larger ones. The point is, is between each one of these events that I just described, you had postmortems, you had remediation plans, you had maybe organizational changes as a response to these events. You had um, staffing changes, right? You probably changed policies and procedures, right? But you, none of these things actually helped prevent the next event. Why? One more observation before I give you why. We used to have 13 stock exchanges, right? There's actually 40 places, up to 50 places, where you can actually trade in the U.S. stock markets. I'm just going to focus on the 13 stock exchanges. Um, it's just much easier to handle. Um, Across these 13 stock exchanges, you have unique coding practices. You have different core programming languages. You have product features, different product pre features. You have different humans. You have different organizational structures. You have different monitoring tools, surveillance tools, audit functions, networking server hardware vendors, software vendors. I'm sure you can imagine a much longer list. But they all fail. They all have experienced a failure. So the closest comparison that I can give you the closest comparison that I can give to all of you is that I mean, you're all building websites and complex systems of your own, and we talk about DevOps, we talk about coding practices, Python, Ruby, you can go down the list. But you've all experienced failures. So the tools that you use and how you use them eh, doesn't really guarantee a lot. So why? Why is this happening? It's because failure is a feature of complex systems. You're actually buying it. So when you go complex, you are bringing the failure with you. It's an important, important thing to think about as you look at your systems. But there are other features. So the last decade has seen an investment by all market participants, stock markets, broker dealers, traders, et cetera, et cetera, fintech startups and the way that they interact with the markets. Um, in technology at an unprecedented pace, as evidenced by the ability to interact with the thousands of buy and sell order type combinations at speeds and volumes enabled by the latest technology innovations. This is our, this is, it, it, the most brilliant thing about it is that we're able to change so well. Our adaptability, our needs to, to the requirements set by either internal customers or external customers, we are actually responding to those demands. And we are changing very quickly over a very short period of time. That's a feature of complexity. You can do that. Um, oh, the note that I had that, and this might impress or not, but it kind of impresses me. It, it, I'm going to guess that on a nightly basis, 
in the stock markets, there are thousands to ten thousands of changes that are happening all the time. So when the news hits, when there's an outage, you know, we kind of focus on that, right? Thousands to ten thousand. That's configuration changes, software changes, networking changes. Again, this is a great audience. I don't have to go into all the details of that. Um, that's a lot of changes on a nightly basis. And we're up most of the time. So here's, an, here's, an, here's, an, here's a scenario, right? You have a particular host. It's reaching its limitations, right? Whatever those limitations are. Um, and throwing hardware at the problem is no longer a solution. So you start to think it through. So you know what? Maybe I should split this up, right? Maybe I'll create two apps on two different hosts. Um, what do you get? You got performance now. You got scalability. Also features of complex systems, right? You're distributing your environment. You get isolation. You can have a piece go down that doesn't bother any other piece in the system, right? If I troubleshoot our email server, I don't want to see our main database go down, right? Sharding those things out, spreading them out, distributing them out are a feature of complex systems. If you look at your systems, I imagine all of you are working on complex systems. Another important feature. And I'm running out of time. So, in my experience, that is standard operating procedure for what I'm doing. So I'm going to try to quickly run through the last part. So what does that mean? So we're really good at scaling out. We're really good at isolating. We're really good at building very large things. We are commoditizing complex systems. Clouds. X as a service, right? We're actually commoditizing complex systems. Brilliant. So we can do all those features of complex systems, but we're still not good at the failures, right? My favorite way of dealing with the failures, and I'm going to do an all spot thing and quote a white paper, um, is there's a law called Ashby's Law of Requisite Variety, right? And I have to read this because I got to get this right. Ashby's Law of Requisite Variety can be simply summarized. The, the variety of states in a complex system cannot be controlled if the controls in it of themselves do not have a greater level of variety. What does that mean? I am solving complexity with complexity. Example, when we started to break the millisecond boundary of speed and performance, you start to learn a lot of interesting things on that edge, right? Um, not just about how hardware can handle things or how quickly developers can write code, but you realize how important control is. So imagine a lot of the business feature meetings and the conference says it's about performance. You are always trying to go faster. And then when you're in your post-mortem meetings, you're trying to figure out why is everything slower, right? For me in the markets, I had to actually put a level of control, literally a knob, to make things go faster and slower. Why? Because being down is worse than being up in degraded mode. So if I'm moving at a million messages per second and I see it starting to strain the edges of my system that's gonna have necessary impact to my entire trading platform, I can tone it down. Yes, there's going to be some impact to it, but I don't go down. People don't get the level of immediacy. Latency goes up. That's all fine. That's better than down. So I actually, we built a knob to say, at this point in time, I want to do this. And when all my monitoring tools tell me that I'm safe, then I crank it back up and we keep going on. So again, complex systems comes with a lot of features. We're really good at some of them. There's one that I think we're still bad at where I'd like to work with all of you and trying to figure out how to, do, how to be better at it, right? Control is extremely important. If you cannot respond to the variety of your system, that time when you get an outage, what are you gonna do? It just goes down. If it's gonna go into unexpected states, you have to be able to use your tools or build things that allow you to respond to these unexpected states. So your policies and your procedures are not going to help you because they're policies and procedures and you wrote them six months ago and they're probably old anyway. But like you have this weird outage, you cannot apply that. It's important to note. So I'm running out of time here. Uh, I appreciate your time. I'm definitely doing a office hours. So any questions, please come to me. Any feedback, please come to me. Any criticisms, please come to me. Um, and, th and thank you.